Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So everybody was freaking out when they released this Gilly preview of her reading about Azor Ahai. So I'm going to explain why that's so important, what the show has left out from the books in The Prince Who Was Promised. So careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on the show so far. There's some really big stuff that's coming up that I talk about at the end of the video. If you're new to the channel, there's a new round of the Game of Thrones giveaway happening. It's for a copy of the enhanced editions of the books. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. So we got to talk about this Gilly page that she's reading. Why is she reading about Azor Ahai and how that's competing with the idea of the prince who was promised? There are two competing theories, but the big reveal is that they both talk about the same mythical figure that's going to save them from the coming darkness, which in modern context is the Night King and his army, the second long night. So what's happening here is that Gilly is actually reading a page from the World of Ice and Fire book in real life. But she's not reading about Azor Ahai specifically. She's reading about the Long Night in Azor Ahai is mentioned during this passage. So I'll read what it says here. So it's kind of hard to make out, but this is what the text that she's looking at reads. It says, It is also written that there are annals in Ashai of such a darkness and of a hero who fought against it with a red sword. His deeds are said to have been performed before the rise of Valyria in the earliest ages when Old Geese was first forming its empire. This legend has spread west from Ashai, and the followers of the Red God claim that this hero was named Azor Ahai and prophesy his return. In the Jade Compendium, Votar recounts a curious legend from Yiti which states that the sun hid its face from the earth for a lifetime, ashamed at something none could discover, and that that disaster was averted only by the deeds of a woman with a monkey's tail. So there are a whole bunch of questions raised by this passage, but you see that Samuel isn't so much learning about the prince who was promised or Azor Ahai. He's trying to learn about the Night King in the White Walkers, which is bringing up old legends of mythical savior figures. And obviously they talk about a woman in this particular legend, but this passage that she's reading is actually taken from a much larger text on the Long Night, and it actually reads about some other legends that other cultures have about their mythical savior. Lomas Longstrider is another author from Westeros who wrote a book called Wonders Made by Man where he talks to people descended from the Roiner and they talk about this legend from their homeland where they had a version of the Long Night, the river froze over, darkness came, and it became a parable for how the people had to come together as one to unify, put aside their bickering, to sing a secret song that brought the day back. So there are a lot of different people all over the world that have different ways of talking about the Long Night and how it was solved. They had to come together as one. There had to be a mythical figure. So the TV show tends to change a lot of things from the books, and not a lot of the characters put a lot of faith in the idea of prophecy. Daenerys has visions. Jon Snow is the most practical person ever. So a lot of people that want to believe that he is the prince who was promised, like Melisandre now, might tell him that. But really, this is all about Samwell trying to find hard information that will help them in their immediate fight. But in the background, what the show is doing is just sort of laying clues for really big reveals. And the funny thing here that I haven't seen anybody talking about is the idea that Gilly is reading a page, one, it's amazing that she's reading at all, but two, that it's actually written in English, like so that we as viewers could zoom in on the page and make out the text. So when a TV show does stuff like this, there's usually for two reasons. One, it's so that the actor can just read off the page and Gilly would be able to convey that information to Samwell. Or two, so that they could zoom in even if the page does not get read and we as the audience could see what that reads and take clues from that. Oh, they're talking about Azor Ahai, the mythical figure. We've been talking about Jon Snow coming back. We've been talking about Daenerys, born again amid salt and smoke. So the thing about the prince that was promised is that this theory has been around for a much longer time through Rhaegar Targaryen's character. Daenerys got a version of it in the books, but like Lomas Longstrider's book in the passage that Gilly is reading, they're all talking about the same idea. It's just that all the characters haven't realized that yet, and Daenerys is still trying to interpret her visions, and she's no better than Melisandre at it. So when she's in the House of the Undying, this is sort of the crash course in the prophecy of the prince who was promised that she gets. The prophecy that Rhaegar Targaryen was obsessed with and believed that his baby Aegon was the culmination of. So I'll read this passage. She's walking through the House of the Undying, and then it reads, The man had her brother's hair, but he was taller, and his eyes were a dark indigo rather than lilac. Aegon, he said to a woman nursing a newborn babe in a great wooden bed, 
What better name for a king? Will you make a song for him? The woman asked. He has a song, the man replied. He is the prince that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. He looked up when he said it, and his eyes met Danny's, and it seemed as if he saw her standing there beyond the door. There must be one more, he said, though whether he was speaking to her or to the woman in the bed, she could not say. The dragon has three heads. So there are a couple different ideas in here. There's the idea of the prince who was promised, then there's the idea of the dragon has three heads. So people talk about those as two separate things. Who are the three heads of the dragon? Who is the prince who was promised? So what Rhaegar is doing here is he's talking about the idea of the prophecy of Azor Ahai beating back the Long Night. So he's obsessed with the idea of this coming darkness and that as part of that, there will be a three-headed dragon to beat it back. And the biggest part of that is his newborn baby, Aegon. So you see the way the TV show changes things. And going back a couple years, fans have had a lot of theories about this vision that she has because the woman nursing the newborn baby is not necessarily Elia Martell, his wife, up in King's Landing. Daenerys does not notice the area that the baby has been born in. It's just a wooden bed with Rhaegar, the woman, and her nursing it and him talking about the idea of the prince that was promised. So it's very ambiguous and that makes you think if the TV show is going to connect this moment with this baby and they will actually name Jon Snow of the TV show that Aegon baby from the vision. But a lot of you know about the Valon Carr prophecy and how the TV show completely cut that out. The idea that Cersei is going to be killed by the little brother. There's a couple reasons why the TV show cuts out big things like this. Because it foreshadows really big twists in the future. And one, the TV show, which has changed a lot of plot points in the past, could choose to go in a completely different direction with the characters that the prophecies talk about. And two, the other reason to cut that out is because visually, if they were to show that vision on screen, it would completely spoil the big reveal that would be happening many, many seasons later. Because if you remember, the House of the Undying was in season two. So imagine if you saw a version of this scene here in season two, you'd be like, who's that? That's not Elia Martell. And this is not King's Landing. This is the Tower of Joy. Oh my God, is that baby Jon Snow? It would have completely spoiled the reveal from the end of season six. So what it seems like is the books and the TV show are conspiring to reveal Jon Snow as this Aegon baby, although that might not necessarily be his name, because book Aegon the baby is a completely different character, and everyone believes that he is the true-born son of Rhaegar that was swapped out for another baby when the mountain came to kill him as well as Elia Martell. So you know that the TV show has completely cut that character out. There are a lot of theories that he could be a false lead. He could be the Mummer's Dragon in just a black fire and not the true-born son of Rhaegar Targaryen. But another big part of the prophecy of the prince who was promised and the prophecy of Azor Ahai is the idea of the comet. It's a hat tip that really big mystical shit is going on in the background. And when the baby Aegon was born, there was a comet in the sky. So at first glance, there's a lot of conflicting evidence for who the prince who was promised is, where this vision is taking place, but I think we can trust Daenerys' visions more than we can trust other characters trying to remember things that they weren't present for. The really clever way that the TV show has found around this has been Bran's flashback visions where he literally witnesses things and then you have other characters that are actually responsible for doing things. Jon Snow, King of the North, Queen Daenerys coming to King's Landing to conquer Westeros who really don't think too much about prophecy. So a lot of the things that the prophecies talk about, people coming together, a mythical leader figure, need to happen anyway in real life. So that's part of the reason why the show doesn't dwell on prophecy too much. It's just sort of seeding things in the background to let you know the direction the story is going. So this really cool character that we've been following this whole time that just came back from the dead and became King of the North may have also been the prince who was promised in Daenerys' vision, but Daenerys herself might also be the one born amidst salt and smoke who is the coming of Azor Ahai. Everyone loves to hype up conflict. The show doesn't like to make things too easy for characters. So there has to be some sort of conflict before everyone comes together to fight the White Walkers in season eight or whatever is going to be happening in the final season. There's definitely some big things they're going to hold back, but characters are starting to slowly converge. There are several big conflicts that have to happen before they do that. Cersei and the Lannisters aren't going anywhere anytime soon. 
But the big twist of the prophecy of the prince who was promised, as well as the prophecy of Azor Ahai, is that the source material that they're all taken from is actually High Valyrian. So the prophecy is a Valyrian prophecy, which is a gender neutral language. So the big theory now is that it's not so much a twist that, oh, you thought it was a prince, but really it's a princess because at the beginning of season five, Varys has that very specific line when he's talking to Tyrion where he says, who said anything about a him? The stronger idea, though, is that there is no one mythical figure because like a lot of other characters say, put no faith in prophecy. Everyone misinterprets prophecy. Even Melisandre, who has visions, has no idea what's going on. She's just trying to figure things out as she goes along is the idea that both Jon Snow and Daenerys are the fulfillment of the prophecy because the prophecy has been translated, it's been misinterpreted, and it's not a roadmap as it is sort of a general guidebook, big warning sign, look, you need to come together in order to fight this. So you get a lot better context when you actually look at what the other cultures say about these mythical savior figures in the Long Night itself. But like I said, the whole reason for all of this in finding out about the idea of a prince who was promised is the Long Night itself in fighting White Walkers practically, which is what you'll see play out on the TV show. The other stuff, like Azor Ahai talking about the mythical savior figure, will just be in the background to make you perk your ears up and go, hey, wait a minute, who are they talking about? The show very rarely addresses stuff like that. Even when Jon Snow came back from the dead, all Melisandre wanted to know was what he saw on the other side. And he said he saw nothing. It was blackness. I never want to come back from that. Do not bring me back if I die again. So let me know in the comments, just based on this scene here that they're teasing, how do you think the show is going to reveal the idea of the prince who was promised in Azor High, and what is it going to do with that? Is it just going to be a throwaway moment for the fans, or is it going to be more like Cersei's prophecy, where even though you see it play out on the TV show in the future, they never directly verbally address it after the characters read about it? The really big thing that's coming up next Sunday is American Gods is premiering on stars in the United States in Amazon internationally. So in the next couple of days, I'm going to do a trailer video for that, just explaining the broad concepts of the series. Some of you probably know all about it or have read the book already. It's a lot like Game of Thrones if it were told from the perspective of the gods. It's going to be crazy. So make sure you watch it when it airs next Sunday. But leave all your requests for Game of Thrones videos in the comments below. Congratulations to last week's giveaway winner, Rafael Nunez. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. Click here for all my Game of Thrones Season 7 promo breakdowns, and you can click here for brand new Black Panther. Thank you so much for watching. Let's high five. I'll see you guys in the next video.